All right. So this one, look, I, I really want to speak to all of the culinarians that's um, either going from one career choice, moving into the culinary field or, you know, fresh out of their culinary apprenticeship. Uh, program with a you know restaurant whatever their case is or jump straight out of culinary school so oftentimes a lot of people place greater emphasis on restaurant ownership um thinking that you know uh from the food standpoint hey if you want to change your life if you want to get you know uh go from crusty to wealthy uh if you if you want to elevate your your life you know the restaurant route is the way to go and often times than not you will definitely see a lot of a lot more struggles a lot more financial output which is needed to do your uh cafe your restaurant your bakery whatever food service operations that you actually want to do and place it into you know um uh in a center in a mall in a shopping strip or wherever right so if you go in that traditional brick and mortar there's a lot you need to almost be a millionaire or connected to one in order to finance the entire operations from scratch to grand opening so um what is often overlooked in our case is food products so um you know this is my first time just like any videos that I'm doing reviews and stuff on, this is my first time looking at it. I'm also going to go through the food, you know, this this video with y'all and from a food review perspective. But, you know, I've started a, a products company. OK, and I had I started out with eight uh, seasonings Then I added hot sauces to the mix and the sales was incredible all right so uh i i understand fully and i know already because for me chef prime chef prime been there and done that um and you know so this is a great way to segue yourself into uh food entrepreneurship is through food products such as this beverages honeys, whatever, seasonings, whatever you want to do. Um, and you can always scale it up. Now, is it going to take a little bit more time than your restaurant because everybody could, you know, walk into your restaurant for a faster sale? Yeah, but, you know, the challenges, <clears throat> excuse me, the challenges to operate a restaurant is going to be, you know, uh, a lot harder than it is to actually scale up a product business. Okay, so without further ado, let's just jump right into this. And it's a short video, so let's just see what uh this this uh olive oil company Graza um is about. Olive oil is not fine wine. Olive oil is a principal ingredient, one of the top three ingredients you use in your life. It's olive oil, it's garlic, it's onions. There's no luxury onion brands. There's no luxury garlic brands. And there really shouldn't be luxury olive oil brands. Meet Andrew Bennett, co-founder and CEO of Graza, an olive oil startup company. Rather than use the standard glass bottle and vintage label aesthetic, its oil is packaged in a green plastic squeeze bottle with some friendly cartoons on the label. But despite its product's quirky appearance, Graza has garnered rave reviews uh <clears throat> okay so he's going the, the cheaper route so when it comes to your standardized olive oil uh sunlight uh direct sunlight to that product kind of degrade the the olive oil itself so going from glass to a green bottle um uh, i can see it you know from a production standpoint uh, you do save a lot of money because you're you're looking at the cost per bottle. Now, if you're running glass opposed to plastic, of course, glass is going to cost a lot from a productive a production standpoint. And then also you got to look at shipping as well. So uh, think about, let's say a, a case is 12, right? Let's use round numbers. So 12 of those uh, glass bottles, and let's say those are 
I don't know, uh, you know, let's just say like a half a gallon, right? So you're talking about, you know, uh, a half a gallon that's by the, the fluid weight. And then you're talking about adding the glass component to that. So when you're looking at shipment, oh my goodness, you're, you're looking at a lot of money when it costs for shipping. Then you got to look at manufacturer minimums um you know for this for people that's just starting out and then uh so all of that plays into the overall price so a simple change from glass to plastic you will see a lot of savings so so far this is this is a uh, very thought out i can see the direction very thought out uh typically with olive oil though people like to see what they're buying uh there's a little uh kind of like a, a shade or hue to the glass because again the longer your product sits out you know in sunlight and regular light or whatever is it kind of degrades the uh um olive oil itself but i love the direction right now where it, where this person is going so let's jump back into it reviews from consumers and food critics alike we believe that olive oil should have a punch a kick and kind of a slap in the face effect and better taste <laughs> damn good my name is yeah i'm not drinking no olive oil straight out of the the the, the bottle or whatever i'm I, that's to each his own but personally me chef prime i'm not doing none of that that's wild but anyway let's go back into it it's andrew venon i'm 31 years old and my company is projected to bring in more year. than 48 million dollars this year After graduating with a business. Well, you know, we got to deal with those commercials. Commercial that this right. fleece appears to be heavier than the Canadian military. It is second to none. Best. A degree from Binghamton degree. University in 2013. Andrew worked for a variety of successful direct-to-consumer companies like Warby Parker and Casper. But he had trouble finding his niche. It wasn't until a trip to visit his wife's parents that inspiration struck. My wife is from Spain. We were spending time with her family. So this is cool. I think this is a pivotal experience for this guy, just like with a lot of other entrepreneurs. Um, you know, you you go along this life cycle of, and you know, especially in his case, I'm going to go to school Then he found himself in these different companies that, that provide products. So he's accustomed to the manufacturing, the distribution, the logistics, the, the legalities of it. So he's accustomed to all of this stuff, right? Uh, Cause you could, you could take those same <clears throat> duplicated models and just plug in your own products and there you go. So that's essentially what he's did, but he got his experience in the manufacturing in the product development field through other companies so it's only right as an entrepreneur uh to segue into having your own product that's for sale and then he looked at uh what was going on inside his own household meaning you know his wife his family uh and the things that they cherish and the things that was you know, at cost readily available to him. Um, and I, I, I see it. So this is a classic story. This isn't nothing above ordinary. It's a super classic, super classic. Uh, own, I don't know if it's the racks to the riches, but the startup aspect of it is typical. And I had a sensory explosion when I tried a specific olive oil after that moment it was honestly pure obsession andrew found that olive oil in spain had a bolder bigger flavor than what he was buying off the shelves in the u.s the quality of the oil there was better it didn't have a chance to be cut with anything else it didn't have a chance to be blended with anything else it didn't have a chance to be bulk stored for two years and then sold and traded as a commodity 
it was just fresh from the source. Andrew went on an olive oil tasting tour of Spain, eventually bringing several mm. bottles back to New York. He took them to Chef Michael Anthony, at whose Michelin-starred restaurant, Gramercy Tavern, Andrew had once worked. When you're trying these oils in a Michelin-star restaurant, a certain ethos and ego starts to build up where you're like oh this is the top-notch stuff and a luxury brand is almost started and mike was able to tamper those expectations and say this stuff is great this oil is amazing now your job is to make it available for as many people as you can with that thought in mind andrew set about building what would become graza named after the spanish village graza lema the first stop on his olive oil tour he partnered up with an acquaintance alan Wow. So, wow, that is actually amazing. So he pretty much got the thumbs up from Poppy Chef, Michelin Chef, you know, uh, in, in New York. Um, and then he utilized that, that, that thumbs up from Poppy Chef uh, to, to go ahead full swing into uh, mass production of uh, this olive oil products um and simply because he attached his uh olive oil products to a michelin star restaurant that's where that whole luxury you know aspect came into play um but it's cool so you know starting out you know obviously you gotta you gotta double down on your marketing so you know he already has a great product it is tested at the highest level a Michelin star restaurant, good to go from a uh, poppy chef. And, uh, you know, so I, again, this is, this is cool stuff, y'all. I think, you know, if you, if you really want to get into the food product circuit, you know, this is the type of stuff that you actually need to watch and kind of like reverse engineer and kind of make these different things your own. And if you want to bypass a lot of these, uh possible mishaps i would say for short you know definitely reach out to me and i could consult you through a lot of the developmental processes and so you don't have to you know experience costly mistakes all right well let's jump back into it Lindushi, who became his co-founder and coo all they needed now was a product more specifically they needed an olive we worked with Piqual, a specific varietal that is mostly found in Spain. We wanted that flavor, we wanted that bite, and we wanted the oxidative stability, which is important if you're going to export olive oil. Working with one specific olive didn't make things easy or less expensive. And one of the, the and I, I want to, you know, kind of like plant this seed and hopefully they talk about it. Now, I'm not sure if they will, because, you know, again, this is a very short video. It's only nine minutes to some odd seconds but um you know and when you're looking at selecting in this person's case the olive oil uh you want to go into these different regions that actually care about how the product is grown um and could trace back give you the ability to trace back where your product is coming from okay it's hugely important and one of the main things that really affects the flavor profiles for any kind of product or any kind of food that you consume is the terroir. The so the 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 land, the you know, the ebbs, the flow of the land, uh, elevation. You know, where is it? Where is all of these food products uh, is is planted? And that's the so the terra raw, and I'm I know I'm saying it a little bit off, but um the the elevation is what brings the dynamics of flavors and flavor profiles into everything that's planted. Uh one of the biggest, the biggest things. So when you're looking at this olive oil uh field, or I'm sorry, olive field, um, you see those hill slopes and you seeing it you know, um, plant it all up and down that, that specific area because of the elevation, the higher elevation um, of where it's planted considering like, you know, everything else. So terroir is definitely one of those uh, key indicators that you want to pay attention to when you're selecting uh, your site. 
in a commodity market, your path of least resistance is sourcing the commodity. Our goal was to do something completely different, which was we want a specific type of olive oil. And we only want this one type of olive for very specific reasons. Reason number one was we liked how it tasted. Andrew says he had the squeeze bottle idea in a place where many great ideas are born, the shower. The moment we're showering, a true shower idea with a Dr. Bronner's bottle. There, this Castile soap in this kind of 900 milliliter behemoth of a bottle that takes forever to wash off because it's so soapy. And probably that extra moment was enough to be like, that's it. This is the form factor. Graza developed two basic olive oil products. Drizzle is a finishing oil. Use it as a salad dressing. Use it raw, we like to say. Sizzle is our other product. And you guessed it, sizzles for sizzling. You can think of it, it's less concentrated. But before he could start selling his bottles, he needed to sell investors on the product. And we got a lot of no's before we got any yeses. And usually one of those reasons was, this is an oversaturated marketplace. Andrew raised $230,000 in pre-launch capital over a year. Meanwhile, the Graza team sent bottles of olive oil to online influencers, hoping they would post about the product. Our strategy, if you want to call it that, at the beginning was get our product out into the world. Get other people using it. No one's going to listen to us. We have no credibility. We're in zero retail stores. So mm -hmm. we use the power of Instagram and TikTok. Graza's website went live in January 20. Oh, look at this, y'all. I am incredibly glad that this guy has brought into this conversation social media use for brand pushing and just overall branding. It is incredibly important. And look at this. When I started my product, I made sure that I utilized one of these website designers that was very very notable, very knowledgeable. I didn't use the homeboy that took a, a free Microsoft class and called himself a, a, a designer. I used like thousands of dollars was spent um, to for brand positioning, right? And when I worked with my manufacturer, when it came to the label, I made sure that and this is the stuff that you actually got to think about. And I'm so glad he brought it up. So you got to look at, you know, if you if your uh, food product was in a grocery store and what I did backtrack a little bit, what I did was I went to a grocery store. I went to the section where my products would be in if the particular grocery store were to pick it up. And what I did was I took a, a picture of that entire shelf system that entire aisle from different angles and what i've done was base my label around that whole picture silhouette and so what that means is your because you're competing not just in shelf placement but you're competing against billion dollar companies that already have a very strong hold of that particular uh, food category. So when I looked at the picture, I said, you know what? These grocery stores are actually color coding a lot of the products, even if the products, let's say, let's say in my case, hot sauces, right? And I also had seasons, but let's just stay on hot sauces. I've noticed that and I had eight different hot sauces. So when you go to a grocery store, you're going to see, you know, a, a regular grade hot sauce, like kind of clunked up all the companies that, that have that same type of uh, flavor profile and product is all grouped up and it's all color coordinated. So when I took that picture, I was able to better effectively design my label so even if my product were to hit that shelf it will still stand out whether it's positioned in the most horrible place in a shelf which is knees and below or if it's placed in the best 
uh, situation where it's waist high, it could still be noticed. So I always thought plan for the worst, hope for the best when I came to the design and aspect. And when people pick up, when you when you position yourself, follow me, when you position your 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 uh, company to the point where you your your product is in somebody's hands, then they're going to do a little bit of research. They might whip out their phone in the middle of the grocery store to check your social media presence, to look at your website. And that could be the last uh, determining factor of if they want to put that product from the hand into the cart. And if you look like a startup, your travel to the top is going to be so hard. It's going to be brutal. If you have a, a website where it's so cheap, it look like you could get your your child to design it or it look like one of those cookie cutter type websites. And then they go to your social media page and you commingle your personal page and threw in your business page and the same thing. Don't nobody want to look at your social media page and see you playing in a playground or shopping and then like three posts up you're talking about your brand like it doesn't it doesn't work you got to separate so branding is one million percent critical and you can even look at his website and I'm going to play this again but think about just a little bit of nuggets just a little bit of seeds I just told you and let's see if he goes into that but also pay attention pay attention to how his website looks how it's clean the same colorway from the website to the product the feel the logos the fonts everything you got to pay attention to the smallest detail because that's what's going to really affect your ability to succeed in the product space all right, so let's continue on, but pay attention to the website and everything they show. 2022. Launch day was incredible. I think we did $100,000 in our first day. I mean, we were sold out right away. We had raised enough money for what was six months of operating with this amount of inventory, and it was all gone. Seniors, if you were born before 1969, no, we ain't doing that. Nope. Whole Foods reached out on day two in our industry, getting into Whole Foods and then displaying success at Whole Foods in the beginning of the snow. See, you see this? <laughs> Do I know what I'm talking about? Do you see this? Look at the shelves. <laughs> Do I know what I'm talking about? I think I do. I want to pat myself on the back. Look, look at those shelves. Let's pause real quick. Look at those shelves. Oh, right up here at the very top of the shelf, same diff same type of products, just different stuff, different brands. Look at the shelves behind them, kind of in the background there. And it's all color coded. That's what I'm talking about. So that's what I took a picture of. And now look at his product. So the classic age old way is to put it in a glass bottle. It may be like a shade of a yellow. It may be clear. It may be a shade of green, but glass is glass and it all looks the same when you stack them up against each other. Right. Um, but look at what he did. The way that he stood out was still keeping true to the color scheme. All right, we're going to use green. It's olive oil. We're going to use green. Green is a color of uh, health. Green is the color of, you know, wellness. Um, and then he got something else in uh, probably a different variation of olive oil in yellow. You know, uh, what is yellow? Boldness, youthfulness, you know. Um, so, but he put it in a squeeze bottle, which if you put his product 
and uh, oh, he got an end cap too. My man, he paid a lot of money for that end cap. But if you put his bottle, even in the midst of other olive oil companies, his olive oil is going to stand out because everybody else is using the twist top. He got the squeeze bottle. So if you want to play in this space, you got to be incredibly marketing forward, branding forward, advertising forward. Like all of those three things is totally different from each other. But you got to embody all of that. And from start to finish, it got to be well thought out. It cannot be a quick, hey, let me just do this. And then as we go along, we're going to fix it. No. In a product space, you only got one shot. That somebody else is just going to overlook it and then you lost your customer for life. All right. So that's the huge difference. So look at that. It's incredible. Everything color coded. But his stand out. Of all effect. It's kind of a, if you can do it there, you can maybe do it anywhere. Right. Since that day, Raza's sales have skyrocketed. From 4.4 million in 2022 to 19.7 million in 2023. The business is projecting 48.4 million in sales by the end of 2024. Beautiful. Graza is currently sold in more than 13,000 grocery stores across the country. Scheduled expansions in 2024 could bring that number up to 18,500. Andrew puts much. Uh, 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 look, didn't I tell you? Look at this. There's other bottles. It's clear. There's glasses, different shades. Look at his products. Look at everybody else. You can already tell it stands out because the same, this is, this is what I'm talking about, attention to detail. The same color of the label is the same color of the top. So collectively, it stands out. It's incredible, y'all. Just look at this. Let's do a pregnant pause so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Some of you may get it. Some of y'all may be like, oh, this is an aha moment. Some may not get it. And if you don't get it, it's not for you then. But his products stand out. Even, even at $20.99 for the the green one, the yellow one is $17.99. Competitively priced. Chabraza's initial success down to good reviews. I mean, we had Bon Appetit covering the business and we had food and wine covering the business and it was another spike. And it was like the best roller coaster you could ever imagine being on. Also important is Graza's presence on social media and on influencers' accounts. We do send product for free to people that have worked to garner an audience. And that's what you got to do. If you're in a product space and you're stingy and you're like, I'm not giving nothing out for free. I, I give you a discount, but I can't do it for free. You already lost. You're just at best going to still be a small mom and pop style business. Making your money is going to be that of a hobbyist. You know, when I started my products company, how many times I gave my stuff out for free? That is one of the other things that you need to really consider. So when you order in your products, make sure at least one case at minimum is that case that you're like, OK, I, I'm going to use this case to, to send out to influencers, to marketing you know this and that to 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 promote the the brand you know uh use a case i'm going to use some of these stuff depending on the sizes and stuff obviously but i'm going to use this particular case when we go to these food expos we got stuff that you know we could give out for trial and samples you know uh go to you know festivals and fairs and all this stuff we will give these out as samples you know uh, so it's a, a, a collective of a lot of things, but take a case, take two cases. It's not going to hurt you. At the end of the day, you could put that off into your marketing expense and write it off. You know what I mean? So just don't be scared. Don't be scared to give stuff out for free. All right, y'all, let's jump back into it. 
business. Some people might get upset by that, but it's like, wouldn't you do that if you had a business? You got someone with a million followers, you're not going to give them a thirty-five dollar bottle of olive oil for the outsized return on that investment for a young brand. So we do that, we do it proudly. But he also says that Graz's growth is helped by its product simplicity and moderate pricing. Sizzle retails for sixteen dollars on Graz's website, while Drizzle retails for twenty-one dollars. Some people will buy Drizzle. Because they want to spend twenty bucks. Some people will only buy Sizzle because it's cheaper, and that's what they can afford. This model helped us address as many people as possible. Graza also offers subscription plans where customers can receive recurring orders of both oils for ten percent off. But Andrew admits selling mid-priced single varietal olive oil is expensive, particularly when it comes to sourcing and purchasing more product. We're working with probably a hundred fifty different farms now. And very frequently, we're buying a hundred percent of their production. We're buying, you know, a hundred thousand liters of olive oil from one farm, stamping that as its own lot, and then bottling, for example, two hundred thousand bottles of that. And that hasn't gotten easier over time. And do you understand if you create a company, the positive effects that your business can do for people that is. You know that you're sourcing from other countries. You can maintain their jobs. This goes further than just, you know, self profit. You're helping families in other countries maintain a standardized living. Beautiful thing about entrepreneurship. Time. It's actually gotten harder. As we've grown, Graza has raised about ten million dollars in capital since it started, almost all of which has gone to purchasing inventory. Andrew says the pressure to maintain quality and meet customer demand has caused him to act rashly on at least one occasion. In April 2023, Andrew posted an apology after accusing another olive oil startup, Brightland, of copycat culture when that company introduced a squeeze bottle for its pizza oil. Biggest failure was letting my emotions. Get the most of me. My emotions, when they're channeled in a positive way, can do a lot of good. But the second I let them manifest in a negative way, they'll do outsized harm. So I tread lightly now when I have thoughts that are rooted in frustration, and I tread lightly in what is the public domain <laughs> as well. Because once you put something out there, you, you definitely lose control. But despite some stumbling blocks, Graza continues to grow, introducing a few new products to its line, like olive oil potato chips. And partnering with beverage company Ora Bora on a canned olive oil martini. I right. product spinoff, other ways you could capitalize on your brand. A lot of people will want to do all of this at one time, but it's better to just be great with one product. And as time increases and your revenue grows. Then you could really tap into your product spinoffs and add more to your product line.、Um, that's obviously you know the best way to go. He done it, got into the beverage game too, the olive oil martini. I don't know about that. I'll try it. You know what I mean? But just 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 out of like curiosity.、Um, but yeah, so look at your product spinoffs. Uh, start that as a long-term plan. You can even plan that out from the beginning, and then just as time progresses and your revenue increase, you could do like a slow product release. All right. Oh man, that almost rhymed a little bit. Okay. In May 2024, the company launched its newest venture: recyclable olive oil refills for their squeeze bottles, sold in yet another unorthodox container: a beer can. The thought of The beer can refill, which is a one-to-one -one refill for our sizzle squeeze bottles, which are 750 milliliters, and then a regular tall boy for drizzle, which is 500 milliliters. On our website, we sell them as a starter kit, which comes with two squeeze bottles, two refills, and a funnel that we worked with Oxo to to design and and provide. Despite these innovations, Andrew says that for now, Graza is going to focus on what it does best. There's a lot of pride in in simplicity. There's a lot of value in simplicity. There's a lot of focus in simplicity. Something that we're benefiting from greatly right now. Graza is an olive oil company, and not just any olive oil company. We're incredible 
olive oil at scale now, sustaining that is a challenge in and of itself. I had 300 business ideas before Grasso, and I may think that I tried to start them, but I really didn't. This is the one that I thought to try to start. Spot on. Spot on. Uh, look, so I'll give you one, one solid thing that you should be considering. Now, when you're creating a product company, the average culinary novice is going to try to sell it to people, direct to consumer where you should be doing direct to consumer just as a strategy to really capture uh reviews but you should honestly do business to business so depending on your product think mike hot honey uh prime case they did a deal with and pizza and and pizza included mike's hot honey on their menu when their relationship was good um so that meant all of the mike uh i'm sorry all of the and pizzas all of their locations nationwide had to buy mike's hot honey because it was officially on the menu as part of one of the ingredients so those are some of the underplays that you can actually focus your attention on. It's not about getting your product into the hands of people because that's that's a hamster wheel. Whereas you could do it indirectly. Hey, let me get some great reviews from customers and keep posting those so I can take that intel and bring it to uh you know these other restaurants these other things you know companies i'm trying to uh you know either co-brand or, or you know have them pick up my product to use for their food product um or you know from the beverage side to offer my line of beverage in their restaurants as a uh, secondary or third option outside of coca-cola and those heavier contracts so look and there's a whole there's a whole killer strategy uh that you can really tap into to really expedite all of this i've done it with mines um you know i i got all of it locked in plug and play is the name of the game y'all so just think outside the box and i'm only talking to my my food service entrepreneurs right now think outside the box don't think in a sense of this is how things have always been because doing it that way you're going to get the same results switch it up all right focus more on business to business and a little bit a little bit one of these salt bay joints a little bit light a little bit of crumbs when it comes to uh the the actual you know direct reach to consumers all right y'all chef prime out hey look if y'all want to jump into it we could do a deep dive conversation on this um and like i said before consulting is an option extended to any of you you know how to reach me just go into the about section you could be able to reach me all right y'all